This guy, this was the best near-death story I ever heard. It made you want to die. <laughs> it, was, it was the most realistic near-death I ever heard about. All the other death that I've heard about, it sounded like fantasies, like they were still in their thoughts, and they would die in the way that they had heard somebody else's story, where you die, you go, through, you look up, you go through a thing there, and you see mama and grandma and everybody. And, but this one was real, it was real. And it was really amazing to watch it. So this guy said that he was a radical black at one time. He had a lot of anger. He hated white people, and he uh, lived in his thoughts, you know, because as a result of having that anger, he was living in his thoughts. And, but he didn't know. He didn't realize that was going on. And so he was like, he had been brainwashed by the uh, leaders, political leaders and things like that. He hated white people, and he was like really into it. He had an angry heart. But then one day he had a heart attack. He was driving and he was having a heart attack. And long story short, he drove himself to the hospital. And while, while they were trying to resuscitate, uh, resu what's that the word? Resuscitate. Re what? Resuscitate. Resuscitate him. Uh, he left his body. He really just left the body, and he was able to look down, and he saw what was going on. Did you watch it, too? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. And he saw the doctors working on him, and then there was one woman standing in a corner. She was like this, worried about him, and that he felt really bad for her because he was thinking, that's not, ain't no problem, fine. You don't have to be worried about me. I'm doing just fine, right? But he felt bad about her, for her. And then he talked about, uh, he went into this darkness. Did he call it a void? Like? A void. A void. And what happened in the void? He said, he, over the he said he was, well, he said he was on the gurney, right? And that in a moment before he left his body, he like closed his eyes and everybody became stars, like little lights, orbs of light. Yeah. And then, right, and then right after, he came out, as, out of his body, and people were themselves again. But he was clearly outside of his body. And then he saw everything we talked about. He looked at his body. He realized he killed himself with his thoughts. He looked at his body, and his, and his mind filled his mind, like, in his mind, the words, because uh, he thought, what I'm, what's left? If that's my body, what's left? The, the word awareness and soul came into his mind. And so he goes, and then he looks up. And it's just a void. And it's like, he describes it almost like stars and like the cosmos, the universe, but also a deep, dark, black void that yeah. he could almost feel himself like uh, flowing through. It had, had, had a content to it. The point is, is when he looked at the void, everything was there. Everything All possibilities was in the darkness. In life. life, everything it was in the darkness, in the void, right? Dark, he, dark. he had another word for it, but I forgot what he was it void? I mean, yeah, the, something. But cool. yes. Yeah, he described it almost like, uh, like Nick said, like a substance. He described it almost like velvety. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. But but in there was everything, whole life itself. But what he realized, long story short, because we're not going to be able to do justice to this, long story short is that he he had no thoughts. All thoughts disappeared. He had no anger. All anger disappeared. And he realized that that's what had killed him. He killed himself by being angry and hateful like that. But then he, um, he became whole. He became one instead of being divided. And, and that's what thoughts and anger does. It divides you. And anyone, anyone that is divided is of their father, the devil. Christ came that we may become whole. And so in this, in this experience, he became whole, and everything, uh, this anger disappeared, the thoughts disappeared, and he was free. He was just free. And, um, and the way he came back was he saw, 
his aunt or somebody, right? Aunt who was like a mother to him, I believe. Right, sir? Yeah, he thought that that woman who was standing beside him by the gurney holding her face <laughs> might have been his, uh, his aunt who was like very sick at the time, like in a coma. So he came back. But then when he came back, he did not, on the way back, he did not want to come back. He, it was too painful. He, he got back into his imagination. It was just too much. Yeah. It reminded me so much of the um, silent prayer because he talked about how that experience is still with him and he can sort of tap into that, that void yeah. that he called, he called it. So it just reminded me of the silent prayer because you know, most of us do it, and then it sort of stays with us through the rest right. of the day. It's something that we can sort of tap into. I know we're supposed to be praying without ceasing, but I feel like most of us do it, and then sometimes get back that's lost, amazing like, to lost in our thoughts, but it's, it's still something that's there that we can tap into. He said that when he came back, as Sean just said, he, now that he's back in his body, he tended to drift into the thoughts again, but now that he know. He, he come back to, to the present instead of staying in the thoughts. He tend to come back now. And um, he talked about how everybody's one and how we're all the same. And, oh, he said that when he was up there, or wherever he was, he felt nothing but love. That was, he felt the love of the Father, and he was love. He, he was just all love. And it's such an amazing story because I never heard anyone talk like that before. After near-death experience, about overcoming anger and overcoming thoughts. Yes, sir. He also talked about his interactions with people has changed completely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because he was talking about how when we're born, we're born into these into these you know paradigms of thinking and. Um, these ways of thinking, we're just thrown into these battles that have already been going on and we don't even realize it, we never question it. So now that he's, you know, seen the other way, he, um, when he interacts with people, he can see in them um, that thing that was in him back in the day. I promise you that that's what's gonna happen with you. When you get to know yourself and you overcome that anger and you see what's going on with you, you're gonna see what's going on with others. Without even trying, it's just going to be there. And it prevents you from judging anyone. Because you know now, and you know it's not them, because you understand what's going on with you. And that way, it, it would be impossible to judge anyone else. And another thing he talked about, and we have mentioned it here, is that we have been lied to. From the moment you popped out of mama's womb. Anybody ever pop out of mama's womb? <laughs> The moment you pop out of mama's womb, they start teaching you. They teach you everything. They teach you what, to, what you're going to be, what you want to be. They tell you rich, the difference between rich and poor, and they teach you everything. But what they stop is your self-discovery that's given to us by God. If they didn't interfere and try to teach us, we would stay on that track of being with the Father, right? But they teach us how much money we want, what kind of education to get, how, what kind of people we should be, how we should treat one another, everything. And that teaching us takes us away from the natural teaching and learning that we already have. We already know the truth, but our parents and teachers and things take us away and you just suffer hell because now you're trying to live up to this false teaching and it doesn't work. It would never work. And one thing that's going to happen, as he mentioned, once you wake up, you're going to stop trying to be anyone. You just, you will have no identity. And most people are afraid of that because a lot of people have come to the, to the reality that they are not their thoughts and feelings. And when they get there, they, they get scared. Well, well, who am I if I'm not my thoughts? And if I'm not my feelings, who am I? And they'll go back into thoughts right back into hell. But we've been set up. And our parents and others did it because they didn't know it better. They didn't mean to do it. They were blind too. But it doesn't have to stay that way for you and me and anyone that want to overcome it. It doesn't have to stay that way. We already know. It's so interesting that we already know the truth. And 
every human being that was walking this earth, except for those who are trying to are working on overcoming, are living in hell. You're walking and living in hell. And all you bring in your life is hell. And the devil tell you, well, if you get more money, you'll be fine. You get more money, you still got hell inside. He would tell you to buy a bigger house, you, you, you'll be fine. You get a bigger house, you still got hell with a three-bedroom rather than a one-bedroom. It tells you to get married, have a family. You get married, you can make a family, you still got hell. But the weird thing, most people won't stop and question that. Who's telling me this? Why isn't it work? Why doesn't it work? And instead of doing that, they look outside to try to find something that you had a bunch of friends. And you got a bunch of friends, and you got more hell. But most people won't question, they don't pause. You got to, it was, I hope you get a chance to see it. It was uh, an amazing death. It was a real one. It really was a real one. Instead of going up and see mama, I see, it was outside of his illusion, it was real. And when you wake up while you still have breath here on this earth, you're going to live that reality that he talked about in heaven. Because he came out of his imagination. He came away from thoughts and anger. You must get to the point, and you can, that you have no thought. You got to live a life of no thinking, zero thinking. Isn't that amazing? Your thoughts are your enemies. All thoughts are all lies all the time. And, you, and he mentioned this, you're not your body, you're not your thoughts, and you're not your emotions. It's all fake. Everybody has fear, but even fear is an illusion. It's not even real. The Christians are waiting for Jesus to come back and take them up in the sky somewhere. Yeah, a long wait. <laughs> yeah, a long wait. And they're going to be suffering while waiting. You don't need to suffer anymore. Suffering is just an illusion of the imagination. And nobody, your children, your wife, your daddy, your mama, your money, your friends, your brother, your sister, can't give it to you. It can only come from within, that peace that you want. And it's nobody else's fault. And so we've been taught wrong by my parents and the world took over. But it's your fault if you continue to live in your imagination. You're living an illusion. And then in living in that darkness, you're trying to get something from out there that's not there. There's nothing outside that can do it for you. Zero. You got to go dumb. You got to be dumb. And don't go making yourself dumb. That's a different kind of dumb. <laughs> but you got to know of yourself you can do nothing, and of yourself you know nothing. And stop trying to be anything. It's a waste of time because the more you try to be something, you're nothing. When you stop trying to be something, you're something. He mentioned that he realized that we are the light. He was in the light, and he realized we are the light, and we are. That's the identity you're trying to get back to before you were traumatized. And I almost don't want to tell you that because now Satan's going to tell you, you're the light. And you're going to go around telling people, I'm the light, lying to yourself. Because Satan would use the truth, like he does the Bible and everything, and he'll quote the Bible, he'll quote what you hear, and if you don't know that it's from him, you think it's from God. But Satan will tell you now, oh, you're the light. If he tell you that, let it pass. All right? Because in the light, there is no thinking. When you're in the light, you don't think about being in the light. You're just there. There are no words. It's just living. And you, it's interesting that you can really have it right here, right now, while you live. Because the way you drop your body, you don't know what's going to happen after that. I wouldn't take that risk. Any questions about that? Anyone here has anger? Everybody lying? <laughs> what the? 